Service Locator is like Singleton Pattern but on steroids. Using it, you are able to access all of your important services as if they were singletons, but all of that happens in one place. At runtime, you can then also simply swap out the implementations for each service type. My scene for this example is really trivial, you don't need to have anything, because later we are going to create the services from scratch, so we can start just with a blank scene. As a result, we'll have a centralized way of getting and registering the important services like debugger or sound service. The service locator pattern is a bit controversial, because some people consider it the anti-pattern, because it hides the dependencies and makes the code less testable and flexible. Also, it makes the classes dependent on the service locator itself, but I think that when you use the pattern correctly, it can still benefit your project a lot. Let's now take a look at the diagram so that you understand the pattern. The first elements are going to be the services, which will be the interfaces common for all services of a certain type. So in our case, we'll have an iSound service, iDebugger service, but at any point you can add more. Then we are going to have the concrete services, which will be classes implementing the service interface. So we could have development debugger, production debugger, which would be implementing the iDebugger service interface. So in short, you can add as many interfaces for different types of services, and then you can also add different implementations for each of the interfaces. The main element of all of this is the service locator, which is a class that stores references to the registered services and has functions to register and retrieve them. We also have a client, which is a class that can receive or sometimes register services in the service locator. And the last element which I added into the diagram is installer, which is a class used to register the services in the service locator. The first script I'm going to create is the service locator. The service locator is a mono behavior. I will also make it singleton because it will make it really convenient for us to be able to access it anywhere. I have a static reference to the instance, which this one is private, and then we have the getter and the setter. So if you are trying to get the instance, I'm checking if some instance exists. If it doesn't, then I'm just instantiating new game object to make sure that we always have some service locator in the scene. And below in the awake function, I have some additional checks. So if we start the game and the instance is still equal to null, then we are setting the instance to this, we are not destroying it, otherwise we are destroying this object. So this is just the basic singleton functionality to make sure that we always have some service locator instance. The service locator I will be showing you will be generic, so we can then really use it with any type of service. If you would be interested in more advanced service locator that also provides different contexts like project, scene or game object contexts, so that you can further separate all of the services into different categories, you can check out my Patreon, where a tutorial about that will be released this week. And the way that you'll be storing these services will be just in a dictionary, where the key will be the type, so later we can get and register these services by the type, and it will have a value which will be just instance of that type of the service. So here we have the dictionary, it is just holding the type and then instance of the object. And then we are going to have just two functions, one for registering these services and second one for getting them. So if you are registering some service, I made this function generic. If you are not sure what generics are or how they work, you can check out my tutorial about them. In short, when the function is generic, it can take in really any type as the input. So in this case, we have some type T, then we are storing the service instance. So we just need to give it the instance that we are trying to register. So I'm checking if inside of the services dictionary, we don't have yet the service registered. If we don't have it, then we can just add it into the dictionary. If the service already is registered inside of the dictionary, then I'm just setting it because we cannot have two services of the same type. Then if we would be getting them, we would not know which one of the two we should choose. And because sometimes it is not convenient to be using the generic function, I have made another register function which does the exact same thing, but it is not generic, so we are passing the type as one of the arguments. And again, we have the service instance, and we have really the same thing. We are just not using the type of T, which is the generic type, 
but instead we are using the type that we passed as the parameter. And finally getting the service will be quite simple as well. We will have the generic function, which is going to return us the type T, which we want to get. Then we are just taking a look into the services dictionary. We are trying to get the value of the type T. If we get it, we can just return it and we need to cast it as the type T. Else, if we don't find it, I'm just logging some warning into the console. I will also include one additional function, which can be handy as well. This is the try get service, which is returning a boolean, telling us whether it got the service or not. And again, we are specifying the type of the service we want to get, setting the service, returning true if we get it, and returning false if we don't. And that's really it for the service locator class. Now I will just create a few examples. So I will create those two interfaces. I've created those two interfaces. One is the iDebugger service, which just has the function debug message. The other one is the iSound service, which has some function to play some audio clip. And you could really provide your own functions for it. You could have multiple of them. That's really going to depend on the type of service that you use. Here I have some simple implementations for both of these concrete services. But now as we have the service interface, you can really create as many concrete services as you would want for each of the interfaces. For the sound service 2D, I'm just storing some audio source, then setting the clip and playing it. And for the development debugger, I'm storing the message count and then just debugging the message. And the last two pieces missing are the installer, where we are going to register all of these services so that the service locator knows which type of the service is tied to which instance. And then we are also going to have the client, which in my case is going to be a turret, which is going to be shooting. So for this, we are going to require some of these services from the locator so that then the client can use them. Inside of the service locator, it's really up to you how you are going to register these services and mainly where you are going to get the instance of the service you want to register. So in my case, I have a reference to the sound service 2D, which I'm going to assign in the inspector. So then in the awake method, I can just get instance of the service locator and I can simply register the iSound service. So here it's important that the type is the interface because if you just pass in the sound service 2D as the type, then this is really linked in the service locator. So if you would require some iSound service, this would not be there. So what I'm doing is that I'm registering the iSound service and the type is the sound service 2D, which indeed is implementing the interface. So this way is going to work well. And later we can really implement any other iSound service into the same interface and just going to override it in the service locator. And for the development debugger, this one I'm just creating here internally. You may want to do it somewhere else, but that's just how I do it in this simple example. And then we can register it the same way. And if you want a simple and quick way how to register multiple services that you assign in the inspector, but you don't want to be creating variable for each of these services, you can do it like so that I have a list of mono behaviors which is containing all these services we want to install. I just have a simple boolean whether we want to install it from the list or not. So in the awake we have the same stuff which we had before. This is just for the service locator, the debugger service. But then if we want to install these services from the list, then I'm going through all of these services. I'm first getting the service type. Then I'm also getting the service interface, which this part may not work well if you have services with multiple interfaces because the script just doesn't know which interface it should choose. So I'm just choosing the first one it finds. Then if the interface is not equal to null, we are just registering the service from the list with the interface. And if the interface is null, we are just registering it by the type because you can also register some services which are not implementing an interface. And one way that you could make working these services a bit more type safe is that each service has to be implementing some service interface. So then here you could check if the service is implementing the interface. If it is not, you would just not register it. But it would be just in case that you need to limit which classes can be registered as services and which cannot. Otherwise, if you are fine with the possibility that any class can be a service, then the way you have set it up right now is going to work really well. 
And finally to test it, I have added this turret script, which will be the client. So it's going to be requiring some services from the service locator. Inside of the turret, I have a bunch of logic, which is just related to the turret, to the rotation, to the shooting. The main thing here is that on start, we are getting the service locator. Then we are getting some of the services from the locator. And later we are using them in the update. So what I'm doing here is that I'm just playing some sound in the sound service. And I'm also debugging some message in the debugger service. You can see that I'm using the little question mark here, which makes it that when the sound service or the debugger service is now, it's not going to call the function on it, so it's not going to throw us an error. Ideally, you should be using the question mark only for services that are optional. To the scene, I have just added some empty objects, where the first one has the service locator, the other one has the sound service 2D, and we have the service installer, where I've just assigned the sound service into the variable, or if you would want to register multiple of these services in bulk using the list, you could just drag it here and tick the checkbox. As we start the game, we are not getting any errors. I will try shooting, and you can see that we are getting the messages in the console that we are shooting, that's from the debugger we have, and it's also successfully playing these sounds. And that's it! So now you know how you can use the service locator pattern, you should definitely not overuse it, but that's the same with the singleton pattern. I would say that the service locator is much better singleton pattern, because you have all of the logic centralized in one place, you can easily add more services, and you also get the benefit that you can swap them out at runtime, which is also pretty useful. It's also promoting use of the dependency inversion principle, because now all of the clients, such as the turret that we have, which is dependent on the services, is not dependent on a specific implementation of the service, but rather on the interface. Still, the client is dependent on the service locator, but I think it's better that it is dependent on just one script, the service locator, which then provides all of the other services, than if it would be dependent on five different types of services. If you want to learn how to create more advanced service locator, where you will be able to separate all of your services into different contexts. So you will have project context, which should be accessible everywhere, scene context, just for the scene, and game object context for the individual game objects. Then you can check out my Patreon, where soon I will be releasing an advanced guide about that. Also, if you want to download the project files for this episode, you can check it on the Patreon as well. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!